one of the amazing updates to the Flux AI has finally been released. This new model can create similar versions of your input image, even create similar images with a change in a style, which is unbelievable, with exceptional quality and precision. I've personally been waiting for it for a long time. I'm so excited to introduce it to you and review its incredible features. I've created three versions workflows for this update that allow you to accomplish some truly creative and extraordinary tasks. For instance, you can take any photo you find on the internet and transform it into your own face with the same quality. You can even download any picture you like from an amazing website like fluxpro.art and replace your face in that photo using this new Flux feature. Amazing, right? Stay with me until the end of the video so I can fully guide you with detailed instructions on how to use this incredible new Flux model. This new update is called Flux Redux and it allows you to generate multiple similar images from a single photo. This feature was previously available in Midjourney. If you remember, you could click a V button or variation option to generate four variations of your image. Now this capability is also available in Flux. We all know that Flux currently delivers the highest quality among AI image generators. And the best part is that it's completely free. You can run it on your personal system without any limitations. With the tutorials I provide, you will be able to use this exceptional AI on any system without restrictions and absolutely free of charge. Here, if you notice, I've designed three workflows for this AI and I'll teach all three of them to you in this video. I've also include download links for these workflows in the description, workflow version 2 and version 3 are exclusive to my Patreon supporters. To run Redux on your system, you first need to download two models, SIG Clip version and Flux 1 Redux. I've provided the download links for both in the description. Simply follow the links and from there download the respective files. For first model, come to this link and by pressing this button, you can download the first model just like that. And for the second one, come to this link and press this button for downloading Flux1 Redux dev.save tensors. Very easy. Once you've downloaded them, for the first file, go to the main Comfy UI folder, navigate to Models folder, and then Clip Vision folder and paste it here. It's that simple. The second file is Flux Redux. And for this file, you need to go to Comfy UI main folder, and models folder again and style models folder and paste it here. After this, open your Comfy UI and from the link provided in the description, download the version one workflow. Once downloaded, you can drag and drop it into Comfy UI. When you open the workflow, if you encounter a red error or red errors, just close it and click the manager and then click install missing custom nodes. Here you will see a list of custom nodes that haven't been installed yet. Check the boxes on the left for any missing nodes and click install to install them. Since I already have everything installed, nothing shows up for me. If you see any option here, simply check the boxes and click install. Once done, close the window and restart Comfy UI. It's that easy. After restarting Comfy UI, you'll enter this interface. Click on this option, select SIG Clip, and then click on Load a Style to select Flux Redux 1. Even if the name appears in the list, make sure to click on it to confirm your selection. Depending on your system, the name might differ. So this step is necessary even if it looks like the models is already loaded. Our primary model is Flux Dev, which I've explained in the details in previous sessions, so I won't go over it again here. In the description of this video, I've included links for installing Comfy UI, downloading the two main Flux models, and downloading the text encoder models. You can check out those videos to get everything setting up. Make sure to install Flux and watch the previous videos. Here we also have a LoRa loader node, which allows us to add LoRa models. If you are unfamiliar with LoRa, I've explained it in previous videos. In this example, we are using an 8 step LoRa that lets us run Flux in 8 steps, even though Flux typically needs 20 steps to deliver high quality results. I've explained this fully in the previous video, and I've linked all the aerial tutorials in the caption of this video so beginners can start from scratch. Here I select Flux Dev and set the weight type to FP8E4M3FN because it's faster than the other options and everything is now ready to generate an output. 
At this point, all you need to do is select any photo you like, load it into the load image section and adjust the setting as needed. Here you can specify the dimensions of your image, height and width. I've set the values to 1152 and 896, but you can adjust them based on the original size of your image. Next, choose the number of images you want to generate. In this example, I've set it to four, meaning it, it will generate four variations of the image for me. If your graphic card isn't very powerful, I recommend working with just one or two images at a time. Generating four images simultaneously can heavily tax your system. Now set the steps value. Since we're using the Ada Seb LoRa, you can set the steps to 8. If this LoRa isn't active, you must set the steps to 20 to maintain quality. Once everything is set, click Generate. I've already run all the generation process in advance to save time and keep the video short. So I won't click Q prompt again here. But as you can see, the generated images are displayed here. It has produced four similar variations of the input photo. Look at the incredible precision and quality. I was particularly impressed by how well Redux handled generating hands. In the test I conducted, it performed exceptionally well with hands, though occasionally there may be minor anatomical issues. In most cases, however, it generates hands beautifully. With this simplicity, you can easily achieve high quality outputs. Okay, now, what other creative things can we do? I decided to test whether Redux could handle more imaginative and less realistic images. For example, I used this creative photo of a character with a watermelon head and wearing a Coca-Cola outfit. It's quite an unconventional image, but Redux managed to analyze it perfectly and generate similar variations without any issues. This demonstrates that Flux Redux performs remarkably well even with highly creative images. Next, I wanted to see if prompts influence the output. I took one of the previously generated images and wrote a prompt based on it to see if it would make any difference in the result. From what I observed, prompts don't significantly impact the output in workflow version 1. Whether you add a prompt or leave it blank, the result remains essentially the same. To confirm this, I tested it further. For the same creative image with the watermelon head, I made changes to its prompt. For instance, I replaced watermelon with lemon and described the red outfit as yellow. When I generated the image, I noticed that neither the head nor the clothing color changed. So we can conclude that in version 1, which is the primary version of this model, prompts don't affect the final output. But that's not the whole story. Later, I explain how you can make prompts influence the output. But for now, let's talk about another amazing feature you can use with workflow version 1, adding your personal LoRa models. That could be the best news here. This workflow is fully compatible with LoRa's allowing you to incorporate any LoRa models you want, whether it's one that alters the color, lighting, or style of your image, or a personal LoRa. In one of my previous videos, linked here, I explained how to create your personal LoRa to replace faces in any image with your own and generate images with your face seamlessly. To my surprise, this version of Flux supports personal LoRa's. This is an outstanding feature, letting you take any image you download from the internet and recreate it with your own face. For example, here I've used the same image and applied my personal LoRa. You can see that my LoRa is active with its weight to set 1 and the model has successfully replaced the original face with my own. This is truly incredible. Next, I tested it on an image of a woman using a personal LoRa of my wife's face. You can see how beautifully it replaced the face in the original image with my lovely wife's face. The result is a stunning high quality image that perfectly integrates her features. This means you can generate exceptional personalized images without any limitations. To get us started, visit fluxpro.art for example and in the search bar type keywords like portrait, man or woman to find person images. Download any image you like and use it here. With the regular Flux model, you can even create images with a quality. It means with the regular Flux model, you can even create images with a quality that rivals Flux Pro. This is a fantastic feature. In this version, I've also added an image crop node. Sometimes when you load an image and generate outputs, you may find that parts of the image, like the top of the head, get cut off due to cropping issues. To avoid this, make sure the crop node is active 
set the size to 124 by 124 and position it to top center. This ensures the head or other parts won't be cropped out. You can also experiment with different sizes if you encounter cropping problems. Now let's move to the exciting part, workflow version 2 and workflow version 3. First, I teach you version 2. These two versions offer more features such as making the workflow responsive to prompts for greater control over the outputs, allowing for changes like style or lighting adjustments. Workflow version 3, in addition to the features of version 2, lets you select 2, 3 or even more images simultaneously as input, with the final output being a combination of these images. In all these workflows, you can even add your own face to the image. Everything has been explained in great detail and you can access it through the link provided in the description. And they are only available to my Patreon supporters. Thanks for watching, I'll see you in the next videos.